Resuming debate, the reprise of debate, the Honourable Member for Vancouver, Kingsway. Sharing my time with the member from Montmagny Lillet, Kamouraska Rivet du Duc. And, um, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, you know, this bill that we're talking about tonight is Bill C 31, which is a, uh, an act to implement certain provisions of the budget tabled in Parliament on February 11, 2014, other members. And we've heard a lot of talk given by members of all sides of this House today about Canada's economy and uh, our fiscal performance over the years. And so I, I think it's appropriate to start off my speech by going over uh, some, some metrics, some actual numbers that, uh, that actually tell Canadians what the performance of this government has actually been since they took office in 2006 till the end of 2013, which is where we have our most recent numbers. The amount spent by the Conservative government advertising uh, since 2009, touting their economic action plans, $113 million. The national unemployment rate in Canada in 2006, just before this government took office, was 6.6%. Today, 7.2%. The national unemployment rate of youth in 2006, the time this government took office, was 12.2%. Today, it's over 14%. The rank of Canada among 34 OECD nations in employment creation in the 2006 to 2013 time period, Canada ranks 20th. The number of annual consecutive deficits filed by this government, six. The number of budget deficit targets hit by conservative finance ministers since 2006, zero. The amount added to Canada's national federal debt since this conservative government came to power in 2006, $123.5 billion. The portion of total federal debt that we have in Canada today accumulated just since this government came to power in 2006, one-fifth. The percent increase in real average hourly wage in, of Canadians in, since 2006 to 2013, zero. The percentage drop in productivity, that's the GDP per employee in this country from 2006 to 2013, negative 1.9 percent. In terms of trade, which is the area that I, it's my responsibility to watch and, and uh, critique this government on, when this government came to power in 2006, Canada had a current account surplus of $20.4 billion. That's the total of all goods, services, and investments going in and out of the country. We're in a surplus position. End of 2013, we have a deficit of $60.4 billion. That's an $80 billion swing to the negative in the last seven years. Over $10 billion of lost uh, goods, services, and, and investment in this country for each and every year that this government's been in power. Yay! The merchandise trade deficit that exists in Canada today, a staggering $110.4 billion. That means in Canada that we import $110.4 billion more of manufactured items, the kind of items that characterize modern industrial economies, than we export. And that's not surprising, because under this government, since 2006, the percentage of Canada's exports that are raw resources has gone up by 50%. So quantitatively and qualitatively, are the trade performance of this government has been a disaster. And no less a figure than former Bank of Canada Governor Mark Carney said that the single biggest drag on the Canadian economy has been this government's underperformance of trade. Now, I want to talk a little bit, I, my, my, my honourable colleague uh, from Bulky Valley, Stikin, talked to, uh, who's our finance critic now, uh, talked a little bit about 2008 and what the real state of affairs was in 2008. And I happened to be fortunate enough uh, to be sent here by the good people of Vancouver Kingsway at that time. So I was here in this house at, in October of 2008 as well, and I campaigned in that election. And I remember that the Prime Minister, who was touted as an economist, during the campaign in September of 2008, when asked if there was a recession coming, said a recession was a ridiculous hypothetical. 
I was in this House present with all with many other members in October of 2008 when the Finance Minister tabled an economic update that projected a surplus for the next year and projected an austerity budget only to be hit within a matter of, of weeks with the biggest recession to hit this country since the Great Depression. Neither the Prime Minister through his economics training or the Finance Minister with the full resources of the Department of Finance could actually forecast with all the tools at their disposal could actually see that Canada was headed for a massive recession. Now, I want to talk about the deficit position of this country. When the Conservatives came to power in 2006, they inherited seven consecutive budget surpluses that averaged $12 billion. In 2006 and 2008, this government cut the GST two percentage points. And with each percentage point cut, that reduced federal government revenue of $6 billion apiece. So with that one move alone, they essentially eliminated the budgetary surplus and would have put Canada, just with that one move, at a balanced budget. But they did more. They made a policy decision to carry on with the Liberals' uh, orgy of corporate tax cuts to go from 27% down to 21%. And this government took corporate tax rates from the 21% down to 15% here, here. and cost... They may not be clapping when they hear the conclusion. And cost the federal government coffers an estimated further $20 billion. So what they did was the Conservatives put Canada into a structural deficit. If there had been no recession whatsoever, with no, no requirement for special uh, stimulus spending whatsoever, their poor policy making, their poor economic planning put the Canadian federal budget into structural deficit, which required us to do what the government has done, which is slash services. So how has the government responded? What have they done? Well, they've closed Coast Guard stations. They've closed Service Canada offices. They've closed veteran services and offices. They've sold foreign embassies and properties. They've slashed funding to the CBC. They're selling off Canada's coin collection. They're eliminating the small business job creation tax credit, the engine of Canada's economy that creates eight to nine out of every 10 jobs in this country. They've eliminated support for small business in this country. They've obliterated environmental impact assessments. They've closed the Experimental Lakes program. They've cut scientists and public servants of all kinds. They've even sold and allowed the selling off of the theme song to Hockey Night in Canada. <laughs> now, that's what this government has done to make up for their poor economic planning, the fact that they can't manage the federal budget and put us in structural deficit, and what they've done is they've basically slashed services to Canadians. Now, what have they done here? They've come back with another 360-page omnibus bill that has 500 clauses that amend 60, 60 acts because they know, they know that if they put the discrete portions of this of this act before this House, before Parliament for scrutiny, they know that Canadians would not tolerate many of the changes that exist in this act. That's why they don't have the courage to have each part of this act exposed to democratic scrutiny and the Canadian public. But the Canadian public knows what's going on because you know what? The biggest myth that's going on in this House and what always precedes the fall of a government is the hubris that they think everything's going well. Mr. Speaker, in Vancouver, Kingsway, in Vancouver, I can tell you that if you ask Canadians the question, are they better off today than they were in 2006, they would say no. If you talk to young people who are 22, 24 years old, and you ask them, are you able to find the kind of job that you dreamed of? Are you able to start your career and get a good paying family sustaining job? If you asked couples in their 30s in Vancouver, Lower Mainland, are you able to buy a house and start your family? Are you able to find affordable housing? They would say no. If you ask uh, single parents or retirees how comfortable they, they are, they would say they're very worried. This government has increased the, the, the retirement age for uh, receiving old age security benefits from 65 to 67. They have made Canadians in less secure. And let me tell you, Mr. Speaker, in 2015, when we asked Canadians, what their experience is economically under this government, and whether these budgets have made their lives better, I think the Conservatives won't be laughing at that time as loud as they're laughing tonight.
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Questions and comments? Kestoni Kamantai, the Honorable Minister of Employment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, I heard with interest the um, member's assertion that the government's reduction of corporate income tax uh, rates uh, resulted in a reduction in corporate income tax revenues. This demonstrates two things. One, that he's not familiar with the budget uh, or the fiscal tables. And secondly, that the NDP misunderstands the impact of tax rate cuts because I'm looking at page 92, a chart 3.23 in the budget document, which demonstrates that there's a direct correlation. I don't, I'm not supposed to use props, so I won't, Mr. Speaker, but there is a direct correlation between the reduction in rates and an increase, an increase in corporate income tax revenues that went from $30 billion in 2008 to, uh, to, all, to about $48 billion projected to go to that in 2018 as the rates fell. Revenues have grown as the rates fell. Why, Mr. Speaker? Because we unleashed the creative capacity of the Canadian private sector. Doesn't he understand? Will he not admit at least that corporate income tax revenues have increased, allowing us to spend more on important social priorities? I, I can advise the minister that the uh, budget is not uh, deemed a prop. The honourable member for Vancouver, Kingsway. Uh, well, Mr. Speaker, I mean, cherry-picking uh, figures has been a hallmark of this government. You notice that the minister picked, picked corporate revenues from 2008, just when the recession was, was about to hit, and compared to projected numbers in 2018, as if that's a fair comparison. The second point I would make is, I think what the minister just admitted is that he has slapped $18 billion of extra income tax on corporations in this country, which seems to fly in the face of their, their claim that they have cut taxes for businesses. And finally, what I would point out is this, is that, um, you know, this government still believes in the discredited theories of Ronald Reagan and Milton Friedman, that the way to get more revenue is to cut taxes. Trickle-down economics doesn't work. Cutting taxes doesn't work as in terms of raising revenue, and that's why this government is in trouble revenue side, and they've had to slap services to Canadians. Canadians aren't buying it, Mr. Speaker. They're not buying it. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Sandwich Gulf Islands. The spirited exchange in the House tonight as we get near 11.30. I, I'm always reminded when I hear about trickle-down economics of John Kenneth Galbraith's great line that trickle-down economics is like feeding the grain to the horse and then there might be something for the sparrows and the manure. I'm, I want to ask my honorable colleague if he's concerned that as we see this omnibus budget bill go through the House, that in committee, which is of course the finance committee, dealing with multiple pieces of legislation, we didn't actually ever get a single witness to speak to the portions of the bill that dealt with workplace hazardous chemicals. There was no testimony and no actual study of those portions of the bill. I attempted to amend some sections, but no one around the committee table knew anything about those sections because they never actually made it before the committee for having witnesses. Member for Vancouver, Kingsway. It's true. When one of the, the anti-democratic features of omnibus bills, which this government has become addicted to, is that it, it means that um, there are many provisions of a bill that are rammed through this House and Committee that never are studied in any detail at all. And that's, regardless if you're from the right or the left or the center, it doesn't matter, that makes poor governance. It's the duty of, of representatives of this House. The Canadian public sent members of Parliament here as our primary duty to be a watchdog on government spending. That is the essential role of parliamentarians in this place. And that means that we should be able to scrutinize and have time to look at and review every single proposal of the government. And a government that's afraid of scrutiny, like this government is, is a government that's afraid of the Canadian people. And I would point out one other thing. Uh, it's, it's a fact in this country, and the Bank of, of Canada governments have pointed out, that there is some $600 billion of corporate money sitting idly on the sidelines in this country that is not being invested productively in our country. It's not being used for job creation. And if it's true that cutting corporate taxes, as this government has said, would unleash 
the power of the corporate sector to stimulate the Canadian economy. They have some explaining to do why there's $600 billion of vital capital on the side, while there's Canadians, more Canadians unemployed today than there were than they came to office, and household debt is at the highest levels in Canadian history. Yeah, yeah.